So we have an update on the Greece situation for you guys. The Prime Minister, Alex Tsipras, decided to take the bailout offered by the Troika, which is, of course, the European Commission and the European Central Bank and the International Monetary Fund. So lawmakers uh, in Greece had to approve it, and they did, even though there was a revolt within the Syriza party, which uh, Tsipras belongs to. There were many members of his party who said, this is defeating the whole purpose of why we were elected. Why would we do this? Uh, Germany also had to approve it, and they did. So Reuters reports on this. They say, quote, European Union finance ministers also approved $7.6 billion in bridge loans to keep Greece afloat, allowing it to make a bond payment to the ECB next Monday and clear its arrears with the International Monetary Fund. Deputy Finance Minister uh, Dimitris Mardas said the ECB support would allow banks to reopen three weeks after they were closed when Athens imposed capital controls to prevent a flood of withdrawals collapsing the banking system. Cash withdrawals currently limited to 60 euros a day are likely to remain restricted. So I'm sure you guys remember in the height of the chaos, they put capital controls. They put restrictions on how much money you can take out of the bank. Because, of course, the way any banking system works, they don't actually have all the money there. So if everybody were to go there at once and say, uh, I want my money, the whole system comes crumbling down because their response would be, mm, don't really have it. Now, uh, here's what I think is a really, really interesting part of the article. They say, quote, the IMF highlighted the issue of debt relief in a report released this week saying the only alternatives to deep upfront haircuts, a.k.a. more austerity, would be for European creditors to grant Athens a 30-year debt service holiday on present and future loans or make large annual fiscal transfers to the Greek budget. All those options are unpalatable to German and other Eurozone creditor governments that do not want to tell their taxpayers that money lent to Greece is not coming back. Uh, so that's really interesting. So it's almost like they're admitting, yeah, uh, here's what the real solution would be, but we don't want to do it. And to be fair, I mean, do I blame German taxpayers, uh, you know, if they're against the idea of doing any more bailouts or helping, uh, helping Greece at all? No, I don't blame the taxpayers. It gets a lot more complicated than just to point your finger at the people of Germany or other nations and to say, well, uh, they're to blame. Not necessarily. Um, but as you can see here, they're letting you know, here's what like a real solution is, how we can actually fix it, and just not going to do that because it's not really uh, politically tenable to do so. So, uh, this has led to a backlash in Greece with some protests and some riots because the people hate the deal. Again, that's the whole reason why they voted for the Syriza government, to not get a deal like this. And uh, I actually hate the deal as well. And I hate it because it's doomed for failure. All you're doing is kicking the can down the road a few years, and then we'll be facing the same problem again. So how do I know that? Some people might hear me say that and say, well, uh, how do you know? Do you know for sure? Well, we know because this... Uh, Basically, the same plan failed twice already. So, uh, there were two rounds of austerity already, and Greece did everything that they were told to do, and the austerity made their economy worse. They still have over 20% unemployment. In fact, according to the OECD, Greece ranked number one in reform responsiveness. Which means that when they were told to do stuff by the IMF, when they uh, were told to do stuff by the central bank, they did it, they implemented the things they were told to implement, and the economy got worse. Understand, this is a fact. All the predictions made by the Troika were wrong. In fact, let me show you a chart on that here. So for everybody listening on the live show and you can't see this, what you see is uh, what they said would happen to the economy once Greece implemented the reforms in the first two rounds of austerity, and then what actually happened with the economy. So all of their predictions, their best case scenario, uh, what they think is going to happen, or their worst case scenario here, uh, those are all better than what actually ended up happening. So what is Greece going to implement this time around for round three of uh, austerity? Well, let me go ahead and give you some of the provisions. 
there's going to be a 10% rise in what's called sin taxes, which is a, it could be a tax on alcohol, cigarettes, and fuel. There's a 10% additional rise for all imported cars. The number of public-owned companies is going to be reduced from 6,000 to 2,000. There's going to be an 8% cut on public sector allowances, a 3% cut for public sector utilities employees, a return of a special tax on high pensions, and yet again, they're going to increase the retirement age. The uh, women's retirement age is going to be increased from 60 to 65. The average retirement age for public sector workers will be increased from uh, 61 to 65. Now remember, in the past, they had also upped the retirement age when they were told uh, to do so. So yet again, this is more austerity, uh, more of the same, and yet somehow people are expecting that there's going to be some sort of a, a different result. So here's where some people would respond and say, well, they already got hundreds of billions of dollars in loans already, so it's got to be their fault. But number one, like I just told you, they did everything that you asked them to do, and it didn't work. So that's the most important point. I'm going to keep coming back to that because it's true. And then number two, 90% of the loans went to pay back private banks. So as my buddy pointed out on this, some people are saying that, or comparing this to uh, the Marshall Plan. They're saying that the bailout of Greece is like the Marshall Plan. But it's more like the opposite of the Marshall Plan because, I mean, could you imagine how bad the Marshall Plan would have been if 90% of the money just went to pay off creditors and not actually to invest in the European economy? It would have been a disaster. I mean, at this point, if, you know, I was Cyprus, what I would have done is I would have had a backup plan ready to get off the euro, to use the drachma, and uh, to go at it solo, if you will. Because if they're not going to give you uh, debt relief, okay, if they're not going to get give you the same deal that they got multiple times in their history, Germany, well then you you know that they're not interested in your well-being. Essentially, what they're doing is, uh, you know, wringing you dry. All they're doing is continuing to push austerity. All they're doing is continuing to prolong the problem, and the entire time the people of Greece are suffering, over 20% unemployment we're talking about here. Over 20% unemployment, and these guys are saying the solution is, hey, you need to do more cuts, less public sector spending. What, have we learned nothing from the lessons of history? I mean, look at what happened during the Great Depression here in America. What happened is, we needed FDR to come in and do the New do Deal and do big-time public spending, and yes, redistribution of wealth in order to get public works programs and in order to get people back on their feet. And that's what finally worked and got the economy out of the depression. We're looking at a situation in Greece where it's depression-like conditions, over 20% unemployment. And people are saying the solution is do more cuts in public spending, raise the retirement age even more, and point your finger at the people of Greece even more. Would you point your finger at the people in America when they were going through the Great Depression and say, hey, it's your own goddamn fault. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. This ain't no bigger economic problem. This isn't a systemic problem. Yes, it is a systemic problem. 